Ja, hallo, wer kennt denn das Alphabet? Ich, ich. Und zwar, es geht A, E, J, S. Denn das sind die Namen, die wir kennen bisher. A für den alten Mann, der da steht. Oder A Knight of Justice. I für das Mädchen, also E, das Mädel mit dem Headset. J für Jasmine, unsere pinkhaarige Freundin. Und Simon, S sind wir selber. Und jetzt haben wir ein paar Fragen an den lieben Mr. A. Well, first of all, you two are dressed a bit weird, no? I hope it doesn't come off as rude of me. Oh, it's quite all right. Yeah, I wasn't saying anything, but it's a little out there. Don't worry about it. What you both should be worried over, I think, is the fact we are wearing colors. I squinted a little. That's right. Around his neck was a strange black collar. It was also present around his neck. And when I looked at Jasmine, it seemed she had one too. And I said, we, I mean, all of us. You both have one just like ours, too. I'm afraid that is not part of my usual new fashion. Yeah, I noticed it earlier. That must have been what she was pointing at before the two of them came up to us. I wanted to examine it closer, but I couldn't. Obviously, see mine, and I didn't think it was polite to ask either of them to, to, to others. Can you turn around, Jay? I want to see the back. It looks a bit strange, sure. Oh, oh huh? Okay, then. Just as I thought, in the back was a strange circle. Like some kind of red scanner. Or more like a large button? Perhaps pressing it would release the colors, but if that was the case, then we, why did we wear these? It was equally possible the button was dangerous. I left it alone for now. I'm willing to take chances. Still, while examining closely, a thought flashed by me. I remembered we when I'd been in the train earlier. I wasn't there with I was in the train with Marco. Right, speaking of which, where was Marco anyway? He didn't try to scare us like I thought he would. There's some sort of lock in the back, I think. There's a glowing red button, but I don't think it would be a good idea to press it. I just don't know what will happen. I see. Oh, something's coming. Something's coming. I put away, looking in the direction that something was coming from. It was another train, and it arrived at our side of the station. Just like ours had been stopped earlier. Interesting! I could see two men in this one. Just when A and I went over to the windows to stare, the only one who hadn't moved at all was E. In fact, she hadn't spoken even once ever since the two of them came up to us. But all those thoughts were dispelled when I noticed one of the two men inside the train was Marco. The other was a large buff man, we can inch on. He didn't look particularly long, young. I couldn't tell because it was I could tell because it was a wet hat, wet hat. Even if his hair had several long streaks of grey hair scattered throughout. Nearly combed on one side, the other was a bit more of a mess. It was, so it was like that when you arrived too. I think we need to open those doors. I don't see how we could do it, but let's try, I guess. Naturally, I figured those doors wouldn't open even if we tried. As it was an automatic system. Yet we still decided to have a look around the train. Just in case. If you would E reden! <laughs> Generally speaking, there was always a driver or conductor, I guess, who sat in the front till cabin of the train. There was also a second cabin in the back with another one of them. Together, if they combined, they form a giant robot. On a more serious note, I wandered off to the back of the train to try and see if I could catch a glance of who was driving us around. But as much as I tried to look inside, I couldn't see anything. The view through the windows was completely dark. If anyone, stands, if anyone was inside, I wouldn't know. It was the same for the other side too. I knocked on the frontal driver compartment door. Hey, anybody home? Special pizza delivery straight to the train. The slightly hollowed sound resonated on its own without any answer from within. I doubt they're hungry. The likeliest scenario is that, is that if there's someone there, they don't want to come out. However, Due to the way it's closed, I don't think this door even opens. Wait, they wouldn't be able to come out even if they wanted? Precisely. This probably is no one else's cabin then. I thought that was strange. Trains didn't work that way. Ah, oh, Versus. There was a tiny bit of space in this area. If I wanted, I could drop down to the rails below between the train and the side of the station itself. I really wanted to go there so I could look at the train from up close, but that was ridiculously dangerous for a few reasons. First of all, the welds were electrified, so if I touched them directly, I'd definitely be incinerated. 
The wall touch was no joke. Second of all, if I went down there, I could get hit by the train if it took off again. That's just the risk I did want to take. Both of those were shitty death, and I at least had enough self-respect to want to die another way. So much for that. Maybe it would have helped, but too dangerous for sure. However, the fact that the middle of the compartment was otherwise made of a rubbery surface gave me an idea. Hey Jay, come over here. This is softer, maybe we can break through. Now, even if I can tell that's not gonna work, even I can tell that's not gonna work. It might be rubbery, but it's just so it allows the train to turn. If it's wide open inside, which it is. She pointed at the opening between the compartments. Then it has to be solid and hermetically closed. Even if it's softer, I doubt we can break through this part. I crossed my arms as Jasmine continued examining the spot, even if nothing came of it. Okay. Sometimes the best solution to a problem was the direct one. Went to the door as my first pick. Nope. And tried to see if there was any way for me for my fingers to fit underneath the, to pull them open. I don't think it's going to work. Jasmine saw what I was trying to do, and I had to admit she was right. I reluctantly let go of it. What now then? Let's regroup and think about it again. I was about to talk to the others when something interrupted me. As soon as I moved, the train door finally opened. Almost immediately, the older man walked out. Genau der Typ! He looked at us with. Hatte da Sonnencreme drinne? Oder was ist das? Kleber? He looked at us with a frown. For a second, he looked as if he was going to speak, but he went off on his own merry way alone instead. Hello? Talk about rude. I muttered at the last part under my breath to avoid aggravating him. A man that size you just didn't screw around with. It seemed as though he and Marco had woken up during our search, as the ladder, ladder, ladder followed behind, exiting the train similarly to the mount mountainous man. <laughs> hey Salmon! Hey Salmon! He looked joyful to see me, but almost instantly Jasmine frowned and put her hand over his mouth. Shh! This place is all sorts of weird. We're not using our real names, just aliases. Right now, he's going by S and I'm J, okay? Marco looked at her with all the surprise in the world before he nodded, acknowledged her request. After making sure he understood, the girl let go of him. In a way, I was a little annoyed that my name was now known to old man A and eccentric girl E. However, neither team bothered in the least. There is no cause for worry. Of course, I've heard your name, but it's not something that preoccupies me. I would now be much of a knight of justice were to backstab you now, would I? I want to make sure neither of them would spill the beans, just so I could stay on the level with the rest of the field. But first, I need to bit more information. I've been wondering, do you two know each other? You introduced her, so... Oh, unfortunately, the companion at my side is unable to do so herself. Because, as you may be able to see, she is unable to. Unable to what? Unable to be unable? Unable to see, of course. Ah, uh, she is also unable to hear. She is both blind and deaf, making communication rather difficult. Oh, that's what's on. Thankfully, we have devised a way to do so quickly and easily. We reached for her hand, which she took without hesitation. Their finger then touched in strange ways. I tried to make sense of it. Was it something of tactile alphabet? The whole process took around a minute, after which she lit up. <laughs> Hello to you three. It is as he says. I am unable to see or hear, but I can still talk. It was the first time she spoke since she came by us. Her voice was kind of soft. Oh, okay, soft, okay. It was even softer than soft. In fact, it was melodious. It resonated with me. I looked at the others to see if they had the same effect, but Marco was simply waiting for things to happen, and Jasper was otherwise an effect. They didn't seem to get the same effect from it, then. Something else struck me as odd. Despite the fact she was blind and deaf, she could speak extremely well. If she had been disabled since birth, it would be much stranger. That probably meant she hadn't always been, but I didn't want to press into a complete stranger's past. Acknowledging her words, I nodded at E. I immediately re rectified my behavior when I remembered she couldn't see. Oh, sorry, I nodded, but uh, you can't see, so wait. Embarrassed, struck again. This time forced me to bring a hand behind my head to awkwardly rub it in derision. 
That's when was finding my reaction funny. At least someone was having fun. Do you understand what I mean by making communication difficult now? He touched his hands once again, and the girl beamed, apparently understanding the predicament. This must have happened to her countless times. When they think she didn't look annoyed by it. So, <clears throat> so, so anyway, ich brauche eine Stimme für ihn. So, 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 anyway, sorry to interrupt, but what's going on here? Yes, okay. Jasmine and A filled him in on the subject of our present here. Meanwhile, I had a look around the place, trying to see what the mountainous stranger had been up to. He was alone, next to the big door in the wall, examining the little console next to it. The more I looked at him, the more he looked frustrated with them. He'd been trying to leave the station, but from what I saw, the door was locked and we couldn't leave. And of course, I noticed the train had gone much like ours had left earlier, once we stepped out. It seemed automated somehow. Ahem, it seems we can't leave. I interrupted our topic to bring that to their attention. From what I gathered, Marco was now nicknamed M in the eyes of the others. Ah, oh, have I not mentioned it before? Ian and I had examined the door, just like the large man is doing, but we could not leave. We are trapped here. That's not cool. Who would do something like this? That I do not know. However, we shall all share one element. Namely, we were all wearing one of these dangerous looking colors. Marco checked his own, looking at Jasmine and me to confirm we had them too. That's right. I didn't even notice it. Oh, hey! Just like before, another train arrived, interrupting our own conversation. How many of these trains are going to get here? Acht. We're six here already, but if we all arrived in Paris, then we'd be eight. I looked through the windows while feeling like I was part of the welcoming committee now. Inside were two girls who weren't asleep, unlike Marco and the man had been. The doors opened almost instantly. It was perhaps presumptuous of me to assume such, but was the opening of the doors tied to our awakening suit somehow? Nope, that was a little strange. <laughs> How would someone write wicked in such a way? Perhaps... Perhaps they could see us. I looked around for cameras while the two girls left the train. I saw none. Instead, I focused back onto them. Makum is also in. They looked remarkably alike. Oh, twins! Mm -hmm. One of them was fiercer looking and she stood in front. The other was a little nervous, halfway hiding behind who I assumed was her sister. Don't worry, young ladies. We are in strange predicament, but we are not hostile, I can assure you. Yeah, this is still weird, but don't worry. We're not tied to whatever it is. is. Welcome, by the way. Marco smiled at them. He was a little awkward. He always was awkward around strangers, but perhaps there was another reason this time. I didn't pursue it and instead tried to help calm down the teenagers. Yeah, it's okay. We're all in the same boat here. They really didn't look as reassured at all. The old man cleared his throat before extending a meth metaphorical hand to them. Due to our circumstances, we have chosen to call ourselves by nicknames. I am A. This lovely girl on my side is E. This boy is S. There is M. And the pink lady is J. What may we call you? The twin in front spoke after a moment of hesitation. <clears throat> My name's H, my name's H, and my sister is G then. G, H. Okay, mach ich mal eine Stimme für die beiden. My name is H, and my sister is G then. Die gefällt mir besser. Right afterwards, the man who previously ignored us approached us again. He either wasn't a fan of being excluded, despite the fact it was his own doing, or he noticed the group grew big enough for him to care about it. So what the fuck is going on here? Why can't I leave? We are currently attempting to make sense of this situation, so perhaps we should do so together, don't you think? The man thought about it. His present was frightening the twins, who clamped up again. But first we could use something to call you by. Surely you must have heard our nicknames, yes? Yep, and I frankly don't care about what you call me or what name I give. So I guess you can call me Ray. That's good enough. The train had long gone by this point, no other came by. I wonder if this meant we were a complete group now. We had a Joker, an old man, twins, a childhood friend, a disabled girl, and a big idiot. Oh, and I was there too. The big idiot was Ray, of course. For some reason, I felt as though his head might have been a bit empty with the way he acted. 
even bellowed at us post introductions, asking us to check around again for a way out. We did so a bit drunkenly, but the fact of the matter was clear. There was no way out. Well, that wasn't quite right. There was there were two ways out. There were two ways out. The first was ridiculous. If somehow the television screen allowed us to pass into another dimension. Ah, uh, is this nicht hier von, von uh, Persona 4 oder so? <laughs> nah, there was no midnight chan. Yeah. Midnight Shadow! Woo! <laughs> Persona 4 is it, glaube ich. That wouldn't happen. The, on the only other way was to take the train, so through the tunnel. However, that was dangerous. Hey, I found a lock gate here. <coughs> hey, I found a lock gate here. One of the twins called to us. Deep inside a dark maintenance hall, right next to the tunnel, there was a lock gate. It's bars were thick. What do you think this means? It means it's locked. Use your eyes, you've got some unlike the eagle over there. Can't you just break threat? He attempted to do so. His big bolt allowed him to ram into it with such force, and yet, other than a loud reverberating smash, there had been no effect. The door remained firmly locked. Tell us this door! It's like the other in the metallic wall. It's like the other in the metallic wall. It's so fucking solid! Unless we find throwing ourselves onto the tracks, I guess we're stuck here for now. Let's deliberate on what to do amongst ourselves, okay? It was then decided that we split up a little, talk about what to do and re reconvene. Jasmine and Marcus split up from the rest, and I was going to follow up on them, but A stopped me. Would you kindly speak to each of our little groups to get their opinion on how to proceed? Uh, well, I guess you think it would help them make up their minds faster? Yes! As much as I wish to give everyone their space, we need to be sure of what we're, do what we're doing, sooner or not later. <laughs> I understood what you meant. We couldn't stay here forever. With a nod, I left him to head over to my friends. Actually, I wasn't bound to that. Perhaps I could just speak to someone else in instead. I figured I could go check up on the twins, Ray or all my friends. It was the option of talking to A again, but that was possibly just a waste, as I talked to him just now. I couldn't hide my curiosity over the duo he formed with A, e, though. Oh wow! Okay, wir haben also die beiden, wir haben Ray, wir haben die beiden und wir haben die Zwillinge. Haben die Zwillinge einen Unterschied? Nö, nicht ein. Schade eigentlich. So was Kleines wie zum Beispiel eine andere Haarspange wäre schön gewesen oder sowas wie ein anderes andere also Halstuch, vielleicht Farben invertiert gehabt, aber ne, es ist das gleiche Model einfach nur. Spannend. Aber das machen wir im nächsten Part, denn Ich finde das schön, da haben wir im nächsten Part direkt neue Charaktere, mit denen wir reden können. Wir kommen voran. Hier haben wir einen Überblick über alle. Deswegen, das finde ich gut. Ja, das machen wir. Ich danke fürs Zugucken und ich merke jetzt schon, meine Stimme wird dieses Last Play nicht gefallen. Aber, ey, besser 8 Personen als 16 oder 12. Von daher, das wird schon funktionieren. Bis nächstes Mal dann und tschüss.